What's up guys? Anthony here with Empire Music and EmpireMusic.com. Um, kind of a little bit of a reboot that we're doing here today. I wouldn't even call it a reboot because I kind of had this idea on a whim. Um, filming this on a Friday here and uh, last night I was at home and I was just working on a track just like at my little home studio that I have and uh, like for my own stuff and I needed a different bass tone. You know, I was playing like my typical um, uh, Fender Custom Shop Precision Bass, my 58 that I've talked about numerous times here on these videos. And I, I just wanted something different. And I thought, wow, I have a Taylor GS Mini in the other room that is probably the guitar that I play the, or the bass that I play the most because it's kind of like my couch bass. So if I'm working out an idea, then get this in my hands. Or if I'm working on something that's like difficult to play because of the shorter scale length here, I'll kind of use this as sort of my training wheels to get like a, a, a hard a hard passage under my fingers and I can like move it over to a 34 scale. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna plug this thing in. And I, I track it and it sounded so good in the mix because like, exactly what that track was calling for. And it was a very kind of ambient, ethereal, sort of drony kind of thing. This like upright kind of sound that this thing provided um, when tracking mic through an amp sounded so unbelievable. I thought it'd be a kind of a cool, light, cool video to revisit sort of some of the specs of this, although I've done videos on, this is the, uh, the Koa version of this bass, the Maple version, and I think the standard version, years and years ago when I was working here, probably when I first started here actually. But I kind of revisit how cool these basses are. And like I said, I probably play this bass more than anything else in my collection just because of the convenience that it provides. But man, it's kind of a little secret weapon here as far as doing some recording. Um, again, you really kind of need a different vibe on a track, sort of an upright sort of sound. And I don't play upright at all. Um, it can really provide that. So you kind of heard that at the intro there, something a little bit different. Um, Spec-wise, this, this is the Koa version. So it has a solid Koa top, layered Koa back and sides, ebony fretboard. The scale length is 23 and a half. So to equate that, you know, a short scale bass is 30 inches. This is 23 and a half. So this is six and a half inches smaller than what a short scale bass is. So it's, it, it's tiny. The strings are a little bit different. You can't put standard, um, you know, phosphor bronze strings on here. And obviously you can't put electric bass strings on here like a nickel wild. These are like a nylon core wrapped phosphor bronze string that's made by D.A. Darius. They're specific GS Mini bass strings. Um, so you have to put those on here. Super, super playable. I've traveled with this thing. It's easy to take. You can check it on a plane pretty easily. Um, or not even check it, you can get it up, up top. You can fly with it on a plane. Um, outdoors, if you're just going somewhere, I've taken this thing so many places and just been able to play on vacations or even small little weekend trips, camping trips, whatever it is, this thing's been with me on it. Um, like I said, if I'm watching TV, I can just have this in my hands and kind of play, play around with it. And I've always thought about tracking with it and I never did. I, I think I did that back in the day when I first got it. I don't think it was that great then, but man, like it, for the right thing, it's perfect. Sorry, I don't mean to be long-winded on that. Let's just get into some, I wanna just show you some of the sounds on this thing. And I have, next to me here, a custom shop jazz bass. And we're gonna A-B these things. So it's not really a comparison video, it's just to show what the difference, having something like this in your arsenal as a bass player can be so, so valuable to have. And these are under a thousand bucks. I think this is 899 for the Koa version. So let's just play a little bit. We'll A-B kind of the same, kind of slow passage on that. If you play up here, you get that real tubby sound, which is where we're gonna go. And then we'll move back to the bridge and kind of show you how we can pull out some of the mid-range from it. So check it out.
playing in like a similar place there on obviously now like a more traditional bass. I mean, this sounded great. And this isn't, again, better or worse thing. There's just a totally different vibe as you'd expect. It's, a, it's an acoustic instrument. But, you know, the, the, the point of it is like experiment around, try something new. And just that the, the timbre of an instrument like that just might sit in the mix a little bit differently than, than the more traditional you know, electric bass. And I mean, God, this thing sounds great, but it's really nice to have some options on this. So I'm gonna jump back over to the GS Mini, play back by the bridge and something a little bit, you know, a little less, uh, less whole notey, less, less, less space in between there. So we'll check that out. Cool, so some, I think, really cool examples of what a bass like this can do. Now, I did that through an amplifier and mic'd. That's the way I like the sound when I record it. When I would record it direct, it didn't give me that airiness and that sort of, I keep saying that uprightish kind of feel because I think whenever you record it direct, you're not really getting the sense of what the cavity, or really not even the, I guess the cavity, like just the movement of the speaker in unison with the, uh, with the movement of the cavity of the bass, it just didn't have like the, the, the impact that I wanted it to have. So I liked it, Mike. Now when you're doing that, you're running into feedback issues. There are certainly some trappings for it. It might not be the greatest thing in a, in a loud live environment to be miking something up like that or to be running that through an amp. So, you know, keep in mind, it's not by, I'm not, by any means trying to replace my electric bass. It's more of a, a complement to it and thinking more in terms of a, of a recording session or a very low volume, maybe acoustic setting might work just for with a little bit of reinforcement. Um, if you're recording direct, obviously the feedback's not going to be an issue, but I feel like you're losing a lot of like, like I said, sort of some of the, the a lot of the life of the instrument and spit that out there. Um, so, Another reason I love the bass is it sounds really good acoustically too, so not running direct. We just have this mic now picking up the signal just to kind of give you guys an idea of what you could expect if you got something like this, you're just playing it in your house, just playing it on your couch, some of the sounds that you can get through it. So I'll just move my hand around like I normally would with an electric bass. Let's give you some of those examples. So.
So a pretty decent dynamic range that you pull out of this little 23 and a half scale instrument. So hope that video just not even shed some light, just to like get your mind thinking in a different way and, and, and for a couple different reasons. Um, experiment, obviously I'm a big fan of that with pedals, with basses, with uh, just whatever you can. Try something new. More than likely it's going to inspire you to, to play differently and it's going to inspire you to maybe write music differently or just to kind of think about things differently. Um, and then B, have as many sounds as possible in your arsenal. And I think a bass like this, the Taylor GS Mini, this one's Koa, but they make it in like a standard uh, spruce top. They do it in uh, maple back and sides and Koa back and sides here, all layered obviously. But like add new things to your arsenal. It might just inspire you to practice more, to play more. I think that's hugely beneficial to any musician out there, um, regardless of the instrument that you play. So I think the overall takeaway from the video, like this is, just try something different. If you have any questions, call me at the shop, 412-343-5299. You can email me directly. It's anthony at empiremusic.com. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys.